Chapter 28. Piper. The current grabbed her like a fist and pulled her into the deep. Struggling was useless. She clamped her mouth shut, forcing herself not to inhale, but she could barely keep from panicking. She couldn't see anything but a torrent of bubbles. She could only hear her own thrashing and the dull roar of the rapids. She just about decided this was how she would die, drowning in a swimming hole on an island that didn't exist. Then, as suddenly as she'd been pulled under, she was thrust to the surface. She found herself at the center of a whirlpool, able to breathe but unable to break free. A few yards away, Jason broke the surface and gasped. His sword in one hand, he swung wildly, but there was nothing to attack. Twenty feet to Piper's right, Achilles rose from the water. I'm really sorry about this, he said. Jason lunged toward him, summoning the winds to lift him out of the river, but Achilles was quicker and more powerful. The, a curl of water slammed into Jason and sent him under once more. Stop it, Piper screamed. Using charm speak wasn't easy while she was floundering in a whirlpool, but she got Achilles's attention. I'm afraid I can't stop, said the river god. I can't let Hercules have my other horn. It would be mortifying. There's another way, Piper said. You don't have to kill us. Jason clawed his way to the surface again. A miniature storm cloud formed over his head. Thunder boomed. None of that, son of Jupiter, Achilles chided. If you call lightning, you'll just electrocute your girlfriend. The water pulled Jason under again. Let him go! Piper charged her voice with all the persuasiveness she could muster. I promise I won't let Hercules get the horn. Achilles hesitated. He cantered over to her, his head tilting to the left. I believe you mean that. I do, Piper promised. Hercules is despicable, but please, first, let my friend go. The water churned where Jason had gone under. Piper wanted to scream. How much longer could he hold his breath? Ageless looked down at her through his bifocals. His expression softened. I see. You would be my Deanira. You would be my bride to compensate for my loss. What? Piper wasn't sure if she'd heard him right. The whirlpool was literally making her head spin. Uh, actually, I was thinking, oh, I understand, Achilles said. You were too modest to suggest this in front of your boyfriend. You are right, of course. I would treat you much better than a son of Zeus would. I could make things right after all these centuries. I could not save Deanira, but I could save you. Had it been 30 seconds now? A minute? Jason couldn't hold out much longer. You would have to let your friends die, Achilles continued. Hercules would be quite angry, but I can protect you from him. We could be quite happy together. Let's start by letting that Jason fellow drown, eh? Piper could barely hold it together, but she had to concentrate. She masked her fear and her anger. She was a child of Aphrodite. She had to use the tool she was given. She smiled as sweetly as she could and raised her arms. Lift me up, please. Ageless's face brightened. He grabbed Piper's hands and pulled her out of the whirlpool. She'd never ridden a bull before, but she'd practiced bareback pegasus riding at Camp Half-Blood, and she remembered what to do. She used her momentum, swinging one leg over Achilles's back. Then she locked her ankles around his neck, wrapped one arm around his throat, and drew her knife with the other. She pressed the blade under the river god's chin. Let Jason go. She put all her force into the command. Now. Piper realized there were many flaws in her plan. The river god might simply dissolve into water, or he could pull her under and wait for her to drown. But apparently her charm speak worked. Or maybe Aegilus was just too surprised to think straight. He probably wasn't used to pretty girls threatening to cut his throat. Jason shot out of the water like a human cannonball. He broke through the branches of an olive tree and stumbled onto the grass. That couldn't have felt good, but he struggled to his feet, gasping and coughing. He raised his sword and the dark clouds thickened over the river. Piper shot him a warning look. Not yet. She still had to get out of the river without drowning or getting electrocuted. Achilles arced his back as if contemplating a trick. Piper pressed the knife harder against his throat. Be a good bull, she warned. You promised, Achilles said through gritted teeth. You promised Hercules wouldn't get my horn. And he won't, Piper said, but I will. She raised her knife and slashed off the god's horn. The celestial bronze cut through the base like it was wet clay. Aegeus bellowed in rage. Before he could recover, Piper stood up on his back. With the one horn in her hand and her dagger in the other, she leaped for the shore. Jason, she yelled. Thank the gods he understood. 
A gust of wind caught her and carried her safely over the bank. Piper hit the ground rolling as the hairs on her neck stood up. A metallic smell filled the air. She turned toward the river in time to be blinded. Boom! Lightning stirred the water into a boiling cauldron, steaming and hissing with electricity. Piper blinked the yellow spots out of her eyes as the god Echelus wailed and dissolved beneath the surface. His horrified expression seemed to be asking, How could you? Jason, run! She was still dizzy and sick with fear, but she and Jason crashed through the woods. As she climbed to the hill, clasping the bull's horn to her chest, Piper realized she was sobbing, though she wasn't sure if it was from fear or relief or shame for what she'd done to the old river god. They didn't slow down until they reached the crest of the hill. Piper felt silly, but she kept breaking down and crying as she told Jason what had happened while he was struggling underwater. Piper, you had no choice. He put his hand on her shoulder. You saved my life. She wiped her eyes and tried to control herself. The sun was nearing the horizon. They had to get back to Hercules quickly, or their friends would die. Achilles forced your hand, Jason continued. Besides, I doubt that lightning bolt killed him. He's an ancient god. You'd have to destroy his river to destroy him. And he can live without a horn. If you had to lie about not giving it to Hercules, well, I wasn't lying. Jason stared at her. Pipes, we don't have a choice. Hercules will kill. Hercules doesn't deserve this. Piper wasn't sure where this rage was coming from, but she had never felt more certain of anything in her life. Hercules was a bitter, selfish jerk. He'd hurt too many people, and he wanted to keep on hurting them. Maybe he'd had some bad breaks. Maybe the gods had kicked him around. But that didn't excuse it. A hero couldn't control the gods, but he should be able to control himself. Jason would never be like that. He would never blame others for his problems or make a grudge more important than doing the right thing. Piper was not going to repeat Deanira's story. She wasn't going to go along with what Hercules wanted just because he was handsome and strong and scary. He couldn't get his way this time. Not after threatening their lives and sending them to make Echelus miserable for the sake of spiting Hera. Hercules didn't deserve a horn of plenty. Piper was going to put him in his place. I have a plan, she said. She told Jason what to do. She didn't even realize she was using charm speak until his eyes glazed over. Whatever you say, he promised. Then he blinked a few times. We're going to die, but I'm in. Hercules was waiting right where they'd left him. He was staring at the Argo too, docked between the pillars as the sun set behind it. The ship looked okay, but Piper's plan had started to feel insane to her. Too late to reconsider, she'd already sent an Iris message to Leo. Jason was prepared, and seeing Hercules again, she felt more certain than ever she couldn't give him what he wanted. Hercules didn't exactly brighten when he saw Piper carrying the bull's horn, but his scowl lines lessened. Good, he said. You got it. In that case, you are free to go. Piper glanced at Jason. You heard him. He gave us permission. She turned back to the god. That means our ship will be able to pass into the Mediterranean? Yes, yes. Hercules snapped his fingers. Now, the horn. No, Piper said. The god frowned. Excuse me? She raised the cornucopia. Since she'd cut it from Echelus's head, the horn had hollowed out, becoming smooth and dark on the inside. It didn't appear magical, but Piper was counting on its power. Echelus was right, she said. You're his curse as much as he is yours. You're a sorry excuse for a hero. Hercules stared at her as if she was speaking in Japanese. You realize I could kill you with the fleck of my finger, he said. I could throw my club at your ship and cut straight through its hull. I could... You could shut up, Jason said. He drew his sword. Maybe Zeus is different from Jupiter, because I wouldn't put up with any brother who acts like you. The veins on Hercules' neck turned as purple as his robes. You would not be the first demigod I've killed. Jason is better than you, Piper said. But don't worry, we're not going to fight you. We're going to leave this island with the horn. You don't deserve it as a prize. I'm going to keep it to remind me of what not to be like as a demigod, and to remind me of poor Echelus and Deanira. The god's nostrils flared. Do not mention that name. You can't seriously think I'm worried about your puny boyfriend. No one is stronger than me. I didn't say stronger, Piper corrected. I said he's better. Piper pointed the mouth of the horn at Hercules. She let go of the resentment and doubt and anger she'd been harboring since Camp Jupiter, she concentrated on all the good things she shared with Jason Grace. 
soaring upward in the Grand Canyon, walking on the beach at Camp Half-Blood, holding hands at the sing-along and watching the stars, sitting by the strawberry fields together on lazy afternoons and listening to the satyrs play their pipes. She thought about a future when the giants had been defeated. Gaia was asleep and they would live happily together. No jealousy, no monsters left to battle. She filled her heart with those thoughts and she felt the cornucopia grow warm. The horn blasted forth a flood of food as powerful as Achilles's river. A torrent of fresh fruit, baked goods, and smoked hands completely buried Hercules. Piper didn't understand how all that stuff could fit through the entrance of the horn, but she thought the hands were especially appropriate. When it had spewed out enough goodies to fill a house, the horn shut itself off. Piper heard Hercules shrieking and struggling somewhere underneath. Apparently, even the strongest god in the world could be caught off guard when buried under fresh produce. Go, she told Jason, who had forgotten his part of the plan and was staring in amazement at the fruit pile. Go! He grabbed Piper's waist and summoned the wind. They shot away from the island so quickly, Piper almost got whiplash, but it wasn't a second too soon. As the island retreated from view, Hercules' head broke above the mound of goodies. Half a coconut was stuck on his noggin like a war helmet. Kill! he bellowed, like he'd had a lot of practice saying it. Jason touched down on the deck of the Argo, too. Thankfully, Leo had done his part. The ship's oars were already in aerial mode. The anchor was up. Jason summoned a gale so strong it pushed them into the sky, while Percy sent a ten-foot-tall wave against the shore, knocking Hercules down a second time in a cascade of seawater and pineapples. By the time the god regained his feet and started lobbing coconuts at them from far below, the Argo, too, was already sailing through the clouds above the Mediterranean.